Hello, and welcome to Sounds Heal Podcast. I am your host, Natalie Brown, and thank you so much for joining me as we continue to explore the fields of sound healing, sound therapy, and generally the use of sound for health and wellness. Today, our guest is Lisa Schuster, a Munich, Germany-based medical doctor, acupuncturist, meditation teacher, mentor, and sound and yoga therapist. Her focus combines these modalities into an integrative approach to healing. And we talk about how this came about for her during medical school, her studies, and also being an athlete, experiencing pressures and stress and chronic fatigue led her to try to find a different way to navigate things. And that's how she came to yoga and meditation and sound. And then it also led her to um, explore being creative again, her musical side, and she became a DJ and then eventually was led to sound bath meditations. And so we talk about the integration of conventional medicine and holistic medicine. We also discuss um, her development of her own line of crystal bowls and developing the Sound Medicine Institute Germany. We have a really nice conversation about um, the trend that is sound healing, this field that is really blossoming, as well as some new things that she's developing. This episode is sponsored by the Ohm Shop and Spa, located in Sarasota, Florida. The Ohm Shop is the United States' largest showroom of vibrational medicine tools. They have a wide variety of not only crystal bowls and Himalayan bowls, gongs, tuning forks, but many custom instruments as well. They are a great uh, resource if you're looking to up-level your sound practitioner tools, and they also have trainings, workshops, and a luxury spa if you're able to make it there in person. Otherwise, they can help you out at theomshop.com. So thank you so much to The Ohm Shop for your sponsorship and support of this podcast. Please enjoy this episode with Lisa Schuster. Okay, great. Thank you, Lisa, so much for joining me uh, for this interview. I'm really excited to uh, get your perspective. And I want to start with your background. You know, some of the things when you were younger that were that you find now were influential. Maybe it's a musical background, um, what sparked your interest into the medical or science field. Just let us know a little bit about um, your background, your, your past, those things that were influential to you. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you for, for having me today and for chatting with me. And um, I'm super excited to share some things about my journey. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, um, I was always really into music. Um, since I'm a little kid, um, I love singing, dancing. <laughs> I have a huge um, collection of videos my my parents have been filming me ever since and um yeah I mean I started playing the piano very early and I loved it and I would even get up one hour before I needed to go to school just to be on my piano <laughs> so yeah it was really something that that soothed me and uh, that uh, that gave me so much peace you know and I I really loved it and um I mean, in school, I was also always super interested in, in science. And I think uh, that's also how um, <laughs> the both things um, started to, to merge, even though I didn't know anything about it at that time. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I loved science and um, was super interested in it and was kind of nerdy <laughs> in, a, in, um, in that way as well. And um, yeah, I that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to, to also study about um, the, the human body and how it really works and um, yeah, how I can help people, of course. And um, I actually started studying pharmacy. 
so not many people know about that because I love chemistry. I was really a nerd in chemistry. <laughs> um, but um, after one year, I decided to change to medicine because it was just too much in, in the laboratory for me. And I just wanted to be with people and like in, in direct contact. And I just thought it's it's not for me to be um, just in a, in a laboratory most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's how I, I get um, eventually into, into medicine. And um, yeah, I mean, it's super interesting. It was super exhausting <laughs> as well, especially in the beginning. And that's also how I really lost um, the connection to music, I think, for the very first time in my life, because I was so into like all the studies and the stress. And um, yeah, then I, I did a lot of sports on the sides um, and uh, did uh, professional sports um, bodybuilding actually at that time. And uh, so there was no time for music left. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, but yeah, during like the first couple of years of my, of my medical studies, I just really didn't feel good anymore. And um, music really was my compensation in a sense as well. And um, yeah, and also my connection to my feelings, I think, even though I was not aware of that when I was younger. But um, yeah, just because of always trying to achieve more and trying to be better and trying to be good at sports and having my goals, um, I, I started to get more and more disconnected from my body and my emotions and who I am and who I want to be. <laughs> and um, yeah, then just a lot of symptoms started to, to appear like I felt chronic pains in, in my muscles and bones and migraines and um, stomach pains. And yeah, the conventional medicine didn't have so many um, answers <laughs> about that. Um, and I, I really get to a point in my life where I decided like, I don't, I don't want to do this like that anymore. I just something ne needs to change. <laughs> I, I don't want to like suffer and I don't want life to be that hard and um, always fighting and um, yeah just not easy flowing and um, light as it should be like not always but most of the time at least so um, yeah that's how I actually got into meditation and yoga and practiced yoga more and more I got into the philosophy as well like not only the physical aspects and um, I really loved it and I could feel that it helps me like physically mentally emotionally spiritually and then I decided to do a yoga therapy training during my medical studies. And that opened a new world for me, basically, because um, my teacher at that time, she was really also into the science. And um, I was really drawn to science, as I said uh, before. So that totally made sense to me what she was saying. But I never heard of that before in my medical studies. Um, so it really blew my mind. I'm like, why is nobody teaching that? That's so important. Um, to learn um, about uh, the nervous system in completely different ways and how you can control it and um, meditation and what it does with the brain and yeah so many just super super exciting things and um, yeah there she also had like metal bowls like Tibetan bowls and that was the first contact with sound healing actually um, and I really liked uh, the bowls but it was not like that I played them and I was like oh in love and it's an obsession or something I just liked it and I thought it's interesting um, but uh, through the process of yoga and meditation I really could feel that I I was coming more and more back to my feelings to myself to who I want to be what I want to create in this life and there was this calling to connect to music again um, and to to do something with music but um, I didn't want to just play the piano again um, somehow I really got them um, um, the idea of um, becoming a DJ <laughs> and uh, I started that as well during my medical studies um, and it was super successful because I I really loved it and um, it was just for me an expression of myself to play music like create the sets be creative again always have new musical genres merging, merging together it was just so much fun and I loved it so much so um, yeah, I was getting really successful and could travel a lot and play in different um, destinations and countries. And that's also how I um, got to try out the crystal balls for the first time. Um, and that um, was for me mind blowing, like a sound bath session with 
pure crystal bowls. Um, that really, that was this, this feeling that I had, like I need to know everything about it, <laughs> about them, how they work, what material, what happened with my, with my body because I had kind of an out of body experience. And afterwards I felt so light and so peaceful, so connected to myself and with everything around me. Like it was a feeling that I, I don't know if I have felt it, um, but I couldn't remember it <laughs> because it was such a long time ago. But um, yeah, I just knew I want to, I want to know everything about this and what just happened with me. And I also did it more regularly and could see what it did with me and how I could process um, different things on different levels of consciousness. And was, it was so super interesting. And yeah, from there, the, the journey started with, with sound healing. And um, I also found my instruments <laughs> because I think every sound healer has their, their favorite instrument. And um, for me, it's definitely the crystal balls. And yeah, everything started. I finished my medical studies, but did sound bath meditations on the side and um, really enjoyed it and just felt more and more that this is what I want to bring out into this world. And I want to merge the fields of music and science even more. And I want to bring these approaches, um, especially to Germany, because I live here and the German speaking countries and not many people knew about it um, at that point. And that's like four or five years ago. Um, so yeah, that, that was my mission. And ever since it's growing and I started my own crystal ball brand three years ago and um, my sound medicine institute where I teach with some other teachers now as well. And um, yeah, it's just beautiful to, to see where the journey leads you when you reconnect to yourself again and just go with the flow again and see where it takes you. Yeah. Yeah, that's really beautiful, you know, that you first were just trying to discover how to relieve your own stress and the own pressure in your life and, and where it's led you. And, you know, I'm really curious, you talk about this balance of, you know, music and science, and I'm, I'm curious what you're finding between the balance of conventional medicine and holistic medicine. You know, what are you seeing as far as integration and merging. I think you maybe do coach doctors and, you know, are trying to bring more of this mindfulness in hospitals. Are you seeing a acceptance that th this is possible, there, there can be an integration or, or what are you seeing uh, as far as that? Um, yes, that's a very good question. I mean, I have to say that I probably live in my bubble a little bit, so I don't like have contact to to all kinds of uh, different doctors um i'm i'm in some um huge networks now um with doctors that also work conventionally but um holistically um complementary so um they they are already merging um, the things and it's really inspiring and we inspire one another and it's just so amazing and um for me, when I'm in these networks, it just feels, okay, we have done it, <laughs> but I know that there's still um, a long way to go. Um, and I know that still like a lot of doctors are not that open for it. Um, I know that there's also these kind um, of doctors, um, which, um, which is their approach and which uh, we, um, we need to accept. Because I think also with sound healing practitioners, everybody will find their practitioner that suits them and it's the same with doctors like you need to find a doctor that um, you and train with <laughs> we, because I like to to use this um, this phrase I use it also in my sound healing trainings and um, the entrainment of the brain waves but we entrain with everything around us yeah? and it's uh, it's so important um, who we surround ourselves uh, with and um, so I I can see that um, a lot of doctors are um, shifting and they don't want to work like that anymore, like in, in the medical field only. Um, they, they want to integrate also the energetic parts and they acknowledge it more and more that there's more than just the body and that even though we cannot measure everything, there must be something because obviously people are feeling better after sound healing or acupuncture or other different kind of modalities, yoga. Yeah. So there must be something. And um, a lot of doctors also, yeah, really try it out for, for themselves and see that it works because 
especially doctors are super stressed most of the time and overloaded, overworked. Um, and they also need some modalities. Um, they need some ways to, to soothe themselves. And um, yeah, I think once they just see that it works for themselves, like it like it was my path that I just uh, discovered it through my own healing journey, um, that they are far more open for it um, and far more authentic, of course, um, in, in giving it to, to their clients or um, talking about um, just something that is beyond the physical body. So um, I think it's definitely rising to, to come back to, to your question, but there's still um, some work to do, definitely, to bring more more doctors um, into the field of um, yeah merging the two. Yeah, so it's it's slowly integrating. I see that too. And you know, I'm curious. Um, I'm trying to think of the right way to ask this. You know, with with your medical conventional learning, what surprised you about sound and the effect that it had on you? You know, once you realized what sound was doing on the nervous system, or you know maybe there was something in particular about sound that happened so quickly that changed your understanding from your conventional medical learning. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I think it, it was definitely the, um, the different state of consciousness um, that play a major role and um, where healing actually takes place and where it can be integrated and that's something that I've never heard of before. And like that concept uh, that it even exists. And it was super, super fascinating for me also to feel it in, in my own system, like that there are different layers. And I mean, we cannot explain 100% even today what consciousness really is, where it comes from, where it goes. Um, but um, we, we just know that um, we humans, we have it and um, there's, there's a huge, huge potential in it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm, I'm curious, um, actually, another thing you said about um, being a DJ and then going more into sound healing. Um, I'm wondering if there are similarities there, you know, people that um, go to to dance music or DJing, you know, there is actually kind of a, a trance um, entrainment that happens. What do you think are the similarities there of people um, that experience that type of DJ music? How is that healing? Um, and what do you think shifted in you and, and your approach as you started to do sound baths? You know, what's the similarities and differences there that you and other people experience, do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, definitely like dance and music, um, especially like with with a huge crowd. I mean, the energy needs to be also right. I mean, there are different kind of festivals. And I know that in some festivals, a lot of people use drugs and these kind of things. And I think that can be, um, of course, like you can enter different levels of consciousness, but it can also be dangerous, of course. Like you you really need to, to be aware of that. But um that's also why I, I just preferred more and more in my DJ career to like play in outside locations, not inside of club, uh, in clubs anymore, but outside in nature, like where people are barefoot um, on the floor and um, like everybody is like in a certain energy and um, like an energy that um, can really merge together and create something like, like a oneness. And um that is, I think, where um, like these, um, yeah, what you just um, ex described, like these um, trans states really come into play. Yeah. And um, I, I believe, like also from my own experience, you don't need drugs for that. Like just the music and being in nature and with the right people and movement, like moving the body can bring you into like very, very <laughs> different states of consciousness. And that uh, that can be um, really healing as well, of course. And um, I mean, um, it's it's also about the energy that the DJ creates. You have so much power as a DJ. It's a, it's crazy um, because you you create the music, you create the whole energy. Like it all comes from you, and people just come into your flow. <laughs> yeah, it's 
Um, and I, um, I love to see that, how um, I can just, with my music, um, I can bring people into certain states of consciousness and um, experience um, new perspectives and um, dance and feel their bodies, their emotions. So it's, um, it's, it's very fascinating. And um, I think it's, it's similar to, to sound breath meditations, except all in sound breath meditations, you just lie there. <laughs> you don't have um, that, that movement um, aspect. And um, of course, you also have different sounds. Like um, we, um, we have music, like and music is per definition, something that has a melody, that has a rhythm. And for example, with the crystal balls, we work, um, we don't work with, with melodies and rhythm in general. It's more like this, repetition of certain sounds that um, entrain the brain brain waves and that calm you down so um I mean it's it's similar and then at the same time it's very different <laughs> but I think you know what I mean that uh, like the the states of consciousness that we can change and the healing that can appear that um, can be definitely be um yeah in in a similar level like and depth of course yeah and so what uh, inspired you to create crystal bowls? You know, what had you experienced with crystal bowls prior to making them? And what kind of made you feel that I want to introduce these? You know, what tell us more about that creation process and, and what makes your bowls different or, or special? Yeah. Um, I mean, I am, um, I was in Germany, I, I still live in Germany, of course. But I, from all my travels, I, I got back um, here to this country and I was looking for, for bowls at that time. And um, I couldn't find um, anything that was not beyond expensive for me. Um, and um, I still, uh, yeah, just wanted to have good quality. And I, um, I wanted to have also a set that... Um, that just correlates with with me and that I really feel in my system. And I mean, you're also a sound healer. You know how important it is to really feel the instruments. Like all instruments have their own imprint of frequencies, yeah. And um, so do we as humans. So it's so super important that we need to feel the instruments. Like there will be instruments or crystal balls that you play and you don't feel anything. Um, and then there's the other one that just boom, opens your heart and you, and you feel multiple sensations in your body and different, um, different parts of your body. Um, so it's because we, we are so unique in frequency and so are the instruments. So it's very, very important um, for, um, for me to be able to connect to my instruments. And I, I didn't see the possibility to do that other than with really, really expensive ones. So I thought there must be a way like also I want to I really had this vision to to bring uh, crystal balls to German speaking countries more and uh, also Europe to make it more um, available here and um, so people can um, also have like somebody that they can trust and uh, that can help them in choosing their unique set because I, I know it's it's an investment first. And second, um, you will have them for a while. So it's not that you exchange them um, after two weeks. So um, it's it's a very, very important uh, decision and um, which instruments to choose. So I think it's also important to, to have somebody besides you that um, that you can talk to and that you can give that can give you guidance. So um, yeah, that was my initial thought that um, I just try to um, to find my own bowls. And um, yeah, I um I just reached out to multiple companies and I was checking like qualities and what I like, what I didn't like. And um, then I also channeled like this vision of, yeah, I want my bowls to be named after spirit animals and that they should work also with, um, my clients can work with, with spirit animals at the same time. Um, and that's how everything basically evolved. And I found the, the quality that I really like. And um, yeah. Ever since um, it's um, it's happening and um, it's expanding, and um, a lot of people have found their sets with me and my other teachers, and um, yeah, it's um, it's really so much more spread now here over the German-speaking countries, which I'm super happy about as well. And um, yeah, it's and they are just um, more affordable in the end. So it's not that you. Um, you need to make um, 
like a really huge investment. I mean, they're still not um, cheap. They're handmade and they um, are a good quality. So, I mean, every instrument that you buy in a good quality just has its price. Um, but I think it's it's definitely worth it to invest a little bit more, but have this guidance and be really connected with the instruments because that's what we need when we play them. Like they amplify our energy and we, we need to feel comfortable with them. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah because you asked also what, what's special. I mean, in the end, mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's a handmade product. So um, it has so much more frequencies and overtones um, in it. Um, I mean, there are, for example, also the frosted bowls. Um, and um, I mean, they, they are machine made, so they don't have that many overtones. I mean, you can still do beautiful sound bath meditations with them. It's just different. It's a, it's a different um, energy and sound. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of the, um, the big difference that you definitely have more, more overtones. And I read in, in multiple um, books that um, like the the richness of overtones of an instrument um, is also a sign like for its therapeutic use and usually we use more um, overtone rich instruments um, when we we use them in therapeutic use yeah right just the the richness of frequencies that that, that they yeah. have within them yeah yeah and so I imagine that kind of that desire to to bring and provide that um, there in Germany is also why you started this school. Um, so can you tell me more about the development of your school, um, how that started, um, but also what, you know, what you're offering? What, what does that look like? Yes, so basically I, I started online because I started um, during COVID. <laughs> so online was the only format and option I had um, with little workshops. So it was not like, a big training or anything um but i discovered really fast that i i love to to talk about this topic and to teach about it and to bring my knowledge out there and of course as a medical doctor i think i have some um yeah like in in the science field maybe i can understand things a little bit different than um, other people and also um um, through all the books that I read and articles and research studies, I'm trying to to make sense of it all and pick things together and um, explain it to people in in a different way so it's more approachable to them. So um, and I really love doing that and um, I still love to read new books and do new courses and learn new things about this topic because it's never ending and um, I I know that the best students are eternal students. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, that's uh, how I started and um, then from there everything developed and I started to give um, my my first um, in-person courses like weekend courses um, uh, in Munich um, where I live and um, yeah then also in, in Lisbon so because I love Portugal <laughs> um, I brought it there and um, yeah, and then different formats just started to evolve because I could see like the, the needs of people are different. Like not everybody wants to do a three month program, which is really intense and where you go really deep. Some people just want to study in their own pace and do it on demand. Some people want to be in person. They need to feel the instruments. They need to feel your energy. So um, that's how I started to develop um, new courses that um, so that everybody can, can find something. Um, that, that fits their needs and their budget and everything. Um, yeah, and uh, now I, I also have more um, teachers that also teach for me um, in, in different cities and um, I'm trying to expand it um, a little bit more um, each, each year so um, the knowledge can spread even, even to more people and more people can use it for themselves and others. Um, that's really my my biggest goal and biggest mission to just see see it uh, becoming more um, mainstream, but with people who have um, still like good knowledge and um, understanding of the field of sound healing. Because what I see, like it's, I mean, it's a trend right now. Yeah. <laughs> We know like everybody uh, wants to do sound healing now and just order some bowls online and read something um, on the internet and just start. And um, I think 
that's um that's a little bit sad i mean i'm happy about the trend and that yeah. so many people want to do it but on the other side there's there's a downside um that um yeah, people um don't educate themselves enough about how powerful sound actually is and what it can do and um i mean in the end we can of course also do damage with sound like with everything if we um, if we do something too much or, um, yeah, just not with, with the right approaches. And I think that it's really important that there are good teachers out there um, that people can go to and learn from. And, um, yeah, that's why the Institute is, is so important for me and my work. Yeah. Yeah, that's really important what you said there. Um, well, so two things. Um, why do you think this is needed right now, right? When there's a trend, there's a need. So this field is really taking off right now. What are you seeing the most in the people that come to you? What's kind of the the need right now that, that's coming across from, from people that you work with? Yeah, um, I think the, the main need is to really um, pause to really find a pause, a longer pause than just five minutes and like a, a deep relaxation to feel this inner peace again, feel who you are again, feel what you actually need right now in this moment. Um, and it's getting more and more difficult for people like because of all the things from the outside um, and all the constant media, television, news, things are happening. Um, and I think it's, it's really hard. It, it gets harder and harder for people to really calm down and pause. Um, and I think that sound um, is just such an amazing tool to um, shift the, the body down, like in terms of brain waves, nervous system, heart rate, um, breathing rate, like and helps the people to to get into this really relaxed calm state again yeah yeah i agree just to to hit pause to slow down and allow that for a moment um it's surprising how much we don't do that so we need, need it even even more and the other part of what you you had said um with people just kind of hopping on uh, and and buying a bowl and maybe not learning too much or being informed um, and people even having a bad experience, you know, going to a sound bath or something like that. What do you think um, new people to the field should be aware of, you know, uh, whether it's um, finding someone to study with or looking into information or learning to play by yourself? What, what do you think is important uh, for people to know when they're just getting started in sound healing? Um, so definitely know your instruments. Spend a lot of time with your instruments and know them inside out <laughs> because um, students are oftentimes so amazed when they are in my courses and they they start to I'm just speaking for for crystal bowls now. I I think it's um it's pretty similar for other instruments as well. Like, but just for the crystal bowls, you can use different mallets, different playing techniques. And when I play them, it looks so super soft and easy. And when they start to do it, they're like, "Wow, this looks so easy when you do it." But when I try it, it's um it's harder than I thought. So um. And then I, I always preach to just be with your instruments and really know them, like which mallets create which overtones, which bowls you can play together, how, the volume, all these kind of things and um, become very comfortable with it. And also work with them for yourself because the instruments, they will do so much transformation on, on you, like in the first place. Yeah. So um, I think that would be the, the most important thing. And then... Definitely like try to find um, a good teacher if you can do that now or you don't have a budget or whatever, at least try um, to to read um, like at least one or two or three um, of um, the, the basic sound healing books like we have amazing sound healers out there that do research for 30, 40, 50 years. Um, so um, I think 
um, if if we start to educate um, ourselves with them, it's it's very good. And that's also what I did. Like I just um, found out who who is um, like very into this field for um, a long time that I can just learn with. Because I think on the internet there's so much information right now, so much good, but also so much bad information and misinformation um, so I think that that would definitely be um, be the second and then um, start to to do it um, after yourself <laughs> with friends and family and to really get feedback like because when you yourself play the instruments and hold space and speak and everything you will perceive it differently than somebody else like in terms of volume um, what somebody feels nice feels nice for them or doesn't so it's really really important to um to get feedback also from the outside how it um yeah um how it um is perceived on the other end um and i mean people are very different so it will be also different feedback all the time but i think that's something where you get really um self-confident because what i see also in my students they're always like Oh, um, I don't want to do anything wrong, and which is good on the one hand, but um, on the other hand, um, I just discovered that you need to do it. You need to get yourself out there and practice with um, in a safe space, like not go into a yoga studio and when you just started and do it in front of twenty people. <laughs> just do it um, in a safe space with people that um, that know you, that you know, and um, and go from there. Yeah. So I think that's the. These would be the most important things <laughs> for the beginning. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, especially, you know, getting that feedback, getting that experience, not just jumping right into it. Uh, you can learn so much from uh, what people relay to you and the, the feedback and kind of the confirmation that you get about what you're doing as well. Yeah. And um, well, I'm curious for you, and maybe there's a few different things, but what are you excited about right now? Maybe there's a new project, um, some research you're reading. Um, what What's kind of present, but also you have anticipation about coming up? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, I'm, I'm actually uh, doing some meditations quite often for myself because um, I'm seven months pregnant. <laughs> yeah, and I um I will be having a baby soon. And um I'm just creating some meditations for, for pregnant women right now because I I started um doing that more and more and um I could really feel how they they can relax and soothe into the the har really harmonic sounds of crystal singing balls. So I also use a little bit different approach when I, I work with pregnant um women and um yeah that's that's basically my my main project <laughs> to um to do do a, um, a program for for pregnant women and also for like giving birth and um for breastfeeding like how sounds can can support us there and um yeah I definitely want to get more into that um in terms of um yeah, how my baby reacts to sounds, how I react afterwards to sounds. Like during during my pregnancy so far, I I loved some meditations. It was such a relief in many ways when I didn't feel good. Um, there um, there was nothing left except of my sound meditations to calm me sometimes. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's my main project now to to discover more of that area and uh, find out more about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your pregnancy and also uh, for using it for yourself, right? You're using sound while you're pregnant, but also considering how this can help other people, how you can develop uh, and offer sound to people in pregnancy and, and you know, pre and, and postnatal. And, and so that's such a, a, a beautiful thing to be living it for yourself, but also thinking of how you can share it with others. So that's wonderful. Um, well, great. Gosh, anything else that you want to share with the audience about sound medicine? Anything else you'd like to leave us with? Um, I mean, we talked about a lot of things, mm -hmm. but um, I know that 
I probably you have a lot of listeners who are sound healers who, or who are already experiencing sounds. But in general, I think it's the, the best thing to, to just experience it um, and also try always to to listen to different approaches and different sound healers. Um, like I told you before our um, interview here that I'm a huge fan of your podcast since a very long time. And uh, even when I started and I was looking for resources um, to learn about sound, I um, I couldn't find anything in, um, in German, but um, in English. I could find your podcast and um, I was just listening to to different sound healers and what's their approaches how they started and it's it's so inspiring and uh, for me it's always um I, I call it planting seeds like when I hear something from someone's story um and um their favorite instrument um and how they get to it and how they work what's their approaches uh, somehow it it plants new seeds um, in me and um, they always grow into something it's not like that I want to copy that person but I just know when I get these uh, inspirations um, they do something with me also on different um, consciousness levels for sure and um, that's just beautiful to to inspire one another and um, I really hope that my story can also inspire some other sound healers to to try something new to implement something new so yeah so thank you for for this opportunity and this space here and for um, always bringing in new people <laughs> with new visions and ideas yeah 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 thank you for saying that because uh, i think that is what's so wonderful about the field of, of sound is it is so limitless the perspectives are so vast um and each person brings their special something their special thing and and it can be inspiring to us it can give us sparks and ideas but also can help um, us kind of manifest what's special within us what we have to offer and and so thank you so much for sharing how you found that uh, for yourself and then you know obviously what you're building there in Germany but beyond you know what you're doing is is spreading much further than just where you are. So thank you for your work that you're doing for so many and also for sharing your story with us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Sounds Heal Podcast, sponsored by the Ohm Shop and Spa. You can keep up to date with what's coming up next at soundshealstudio.com. Check things out on Facebook at Sounds Heal Studio. And you can listen to all previous podcasts as well as music meditations on the YouTube channel at Sounds Heal Studio. Be well and stay tuned.